Good evening and welcome to Across the Pitch. Tonight we have an extra special episode. My name is Phil Kennedy and I'm joined by Matt Robards. And today we're talking to another one of our rivalry week guests. And, and this is a guy who we, we've really wanted to have on the show for so long. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of bad things about Twitter but if you're not on Twitter, you only need to at least be on Twitter for one reason, and that is to follow our guest tonight. And you can follow, he's from San Antonio, but his name is Austin, Harry Austin, or at Ram and Call. That's R A M I N C O L on Twitter. Uh, one of the hosts of the San Antonio Soccer Roundtable. Welcome to the show, Harry. Thank you. It's an honor. I've listened to you guys, what, for a couple seasons now? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're one of the, the first people that uh, that kind of started interacting with us on Twitter when, when we started the show. So, but yeah, it's like I said here, it's 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 awesome to be on. And, and like I said here, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. And like I said here, it's a, a huge fan of what you guys do. You guys have always been open to the questions that I have, you know, comparing, uh, you know, USL to uh, the other side of the pond, uh, you know, the English football league and uh, system to see uh, how we rate or, you know, how it compares and, and the silly questions I have. So thank you for uh, putting up with uh, my silliness. <laughs> oh, those are some of my favorite questions. And, and I think you'd agree with that, wouldn't you, Matt? Oh, yeah, for sure. Anytime we can uh, try to compare what we see here day in, day out with what we watch across the pond, it's always it always leads to good, uh, interesting discussions and uh, maybe even some heated moments. But uh, it's all in just the name and the love of um, this sport that we we watch. Hey, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, now. Now we actually we posted your most recent episode uh, of, of your show uh, on our uh, Facebook page earlier today, and that was actually a, a good one for for people getting to to know you because you actually you guys did a, a little introduction of. Uh, your your four hosts there and uh, that i i found out that that you like me uh your kind of playing background was in american football and it sounded like your uh, soccer playing experience as a kid was kind of similar to mine where uh, my my coach ended up making me play with my hands in my pocket <laughs> was kind of how that went. But but so you you were someone who you said you did American football uh, and wrestling, uh, which are actually two sports I did myself. And then you know we both ended up becoming big uh, you know soccer fans and podcasters. So uh, uh, tell our listeners uh, a little bit about uh, that whole story. Yeah, so I grew up in uh, Western Colorado in a real small town, and um, you know for sports we had football and of course the broncos are king in colorado uh you know especially back in the 70s and early 80s uh for that here in, in the 90s during the, the elway years um so it, it was it was football or bust and you know of course uh you know that's 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 what I grew up with, and and like I said here, you know, I remember seeing maybe some World Cup games every once in a while, but you know, soccer uh, back at that stage just wasn't on TV. It wasn't, you know, was I don't even know if it was played played here in the U.S. I'm assuming probably East Coast and and probably California it was, but uh, in, in Western Slope of Colorado, it was mainly football and basketball, wrestling, and. Um, in the spring, you know, was baseball, but uh, unfortunately, I grew up on a farm, so spring was uh, was working with the family. So, but uh, yeah, and you know, I moved down here to San Antonio, where my you know wife's from, and graduated from college, and uh, you know, they were starting UTSA football, and and uh, uh, at the time, San Antonio Scorpions, and uh, it was right after uh, the World Cup. I want to say it was '04. Uh, I think it was the 04, think 04, 06, maybe. 06, somewhere around there. Yeah, 06, somewhere uh, around that time frame. And, you know, I'd seen post, uh, you know, about the, uh, you know, the Crocketeers, who's one of the supporters groups and, and Bear County Casuals and uh, who are now Mission City. And, and uh, you know, kind of interested me just to kind of see that fan experience. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, the uh, 
budget aspect of, you know, who to be, uh, in a, you know, a season ticket for kind of helped push me in that, dis- that direction. And, um, you know, I always thought it would be kind of cool to be one of the original season ticket members, um, for that here. So that's how I got involved. And, um, you know, anytime you go to a soccer game and, and, you know, it hooks you just, it does. And, you know, uh, you know, and, and this is a true story. Uh, we ended up having twins in 2008 and, um, you know, my son had craniosynosis where his skull was fused together. And my first question to the doctor was, will he, will he be able to play American football? And, uh, my wife, you know, gave me the, you know, what the, you know, what, you know, what, what, that's your first question. Uh, you know, Hey, is it going to be all right or anything, but Hey, will he play American football? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause that was what it was at the time. And yeah, you know, but, uh, yeah. You know, but uh, no, it was like I said here, it's, you know, the passion's just grown. And, and like I said here, listening to podcasts like yours and, you know, the other ones in the Phoenix area and, and you know, just, you know, going to the games and having season ticket members and season ticket, you know, members that, you know, you, you kind of grow and develop that relationship with. It's, you know, it's become, you know, more of a passion. And, and you know, to me, it's, you know, for me, you know, I'm in my mid 40s. It's uh, overtaken, you know, my first love of sports. So it's kind of crazy if you, if you really think about it. You're kind of a, a soccer podcast maven, if you will. You, uh, I know that, that you're a guy that, that uh, I, I think there's a lot of people out there that will, uh, you know, kind of listen to whatever shows revolve around their club. And then, you know, maybe they have a few national shows they listen to, but you listen to everything. Give us some of your favorite shows that, that maybe nobody has heard of, because I, I know that that you must have uh, just a whole uh, library on your your iPod if that was still a thing. <laughs> it's still a thing, but I, I think with podcasts now, I don't know if you know. I guess it kind of depends on which side uh, that that you're on, um, whether it's east or west. Obviously, um, you know, for, you know, for the west, you know, if, if you follow you know any of the podcasts, you know, in here, it's you know, it's me, kind of one of the original podcast and i don't i don't think that they do it anymore uh i want to say it was clean sheets uh used to be, used to be a podcast that was ryan shira right uh, i forget who it was but i remember clean sheets they were kind of them um the rowdies podcast uh the the uh, unused substitutes and uh uh this is silly podcast were the first three that i really got into um and here in san antonio uh Kyle and Aaron Marvel uh, did a podcast originally, uh, Pitch Black, and they've changed it a couple of times. And, and you know, you know, Aaron went to uh, more of the local media, and Kyle and, and you know brought on a new co-host. And unfortunately, life got in the way with his. But and that's where me and Scott kind of came in and took over a little bit. Um, but no, it's like I said here. I I think. You know, if, if, you know, I listen to mainly most of the shows on the BGN network, um, you know, uh, some of the shows, you know, that probably non USL related, obviously yours. And uh, um, I listen to Uncle Sam's podcast, which is a MLS one. And then, of course, uh, uh, you know, I listened to a couple of MLS, uh, MLS ones. Uh, um, what is it? The Minivan podcast, which is uh, TJ, uh, you know, from Chicago, you know, through there, I've kind of got onto his. And then, of course, uh, um, with Edson, you know, with Down in the Valley, I've got used to his uh, with the Peel and um, Generation Orange. Uh, for yeah. it. So there, there's just there's a lot of quality out there and, and and to me it's one way that i can help support the game uh you know it's you know in, in just the you know simple tweet of hey you guys are doing a good job you know goes a long way in this business you know to, you know where you know somebody that's not in in the team area listening and you know you know be honest with you it's it's on in the background you know while i have you know while i'm working and you know sometimes if, if a section catches my ear you know, interest i'll rewind it and re-listen to it and especially if it's a little bit about san antonio just to just to kind of see but you know to me that's how you learn and um how you can pick up things and you know obviously this is a family you know uh you know it's turned into a family uh you know with the bgn network and you know just you know all the all the individual podcasts out there here you know you guys have what four or five in phoenix now yeah, it's uh, there's a, the AZ Soccer Radio, and of course the PRFC Fan Show, and that the Rising is One Pod, and then uh, uh, Joseph Lowry, he uh, uh, the uh, 
Uh, Joe and Cleet is what uh, he goes by. He's got his pod going, and I, I think there's a, a few others. There's the, the, the 90 Moss, which is the uh, the Spanish uh, Phoenix Rising. What what other ones am I missing, Matt? <laughs> uh, I think that's it, man, as far as like just what's local here to Phoenix. I, I know that there is that... Uh, I don't think you mentioned the whatever the official Phoenix Rising podcast. Oh is. yeah, with uh, um, with Jake Anderson and yeah. uh, Kellen. Uh, uh, yeah, Jake. Jake. He uh, he he's a real uh, real knowledgeable guy about the team, and he's kind of the, the official uh, local radio guy here. But mm. uh, no, I was kind of just look thinking of the the fan and uh, independent shows. So there's the ones uh, that I could think of. Now, now your show uh, it. Uh, you know, obviously you have uh, San Antonio FC as your mm-hmm. main focus, but but you guys also look at, at kind of that the grassroots. You you follow all of the soccer that's happening in San Antonio, right? Yeah, Scott and Rafa do a great job with the college or not college, but the high school uh, for that here. So you know they've you know and that's um, you know that, that's Scott's kind of passion. Um, I've kind of developed a little bit more with the UPSL and um, with Danielle coming on, we made sure that we wanted to emphasize the ladies game a little bit more. And I think we've got what four or five uh, WPSL UWS teams here. So, you know, we try to cover and, and, you know, at least attend one to two matches, uh, you know, at each, at each home stadium, just to kind of experience. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to where um, I've got to know, you know, especially on the women's side, uh, you know, some of the coaches up in Austin and stuff. So, um, you know, to where, you know, you know, where, um, you know, you know, to, you know, to where if there's some sort of news, you know, that, that I have questions on, you know, I have, I'm able to kind of ask, you know, ask questions, whether it's you know in San Antonio or Austin. So um, to me, it's, it's, you know, that's my passion. And, and what I've, what I found funny is, is you have, you know, fans of the game that like, you know, the premier league, you know, the big six clubs or, you know, MLS here, you know, here in, in the United States. Um, but I found that I enjoy, you know, watching more of the USL, the, you know, the, the lower league stuff here, just because I think it's a little bit more authentic. I think you get a little bit more, uh, player interaction. Uh, you know, you know, obviously you guys, you know, I've been listening to you guys. It seems like every week you guys either have, you know, somebody that has played for, um, you know, a Crittington Stanley or somebody that is currently currently playing which which is awesome and you know if if you had you know a premier league team or um mls team the odds of you being able to do that go down so that's uh one, one thing that uh, we we've gotten really lucky about is when we started the show we uh, kind of called up accrington stanley and said uh, hey we want to be the american accrington stanley show and they said <laughs> seriously <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they, they kind of uh, after we we started doing it for a while they kind of really started to see okay well these guys are serious and mm-hmm. give us more and more guests and, and now uh, you like you said it, it had been kind of where we uh, you had either one courage or one uh, retired player on per week and uh, it was good to be two per week but uh, right now with uh, us having extra time on our hands and the players having extra time on our hands we actually have six coming on in the next seven days mm-hmm. so that's uh, uh, right there uh, there, there's our big uh, promo for next <laughs> week to, to look forward to, and, and so uh, the, from from listening to the uh, the show uh, and uh, and stuff, you've started asking us uh, you know more and more questions about League One, and uh, I sort of followed it a little bit yourself, right? Yeah, if you're gonna do a podcast about the game, you, you've got to have basic understanding of what's going on. So you know. You know, especially with FOP Mob, there, there's no excuse not to, um, you know, like I don't have a team over in Europe, you know, I just, you know, but that doesn't mean I don't follow, uh, you know, the, you know, the leagues in Germany, you know, you know, and in English and, and in England, um, you know, I even follow uh, the St. Anthony, you know, and so which, which are in Scotland, I believe Scotland, yeah, in Scotland. And, and I think they're an amateur team uh, for that here, but, you know, they, they have a, you know, the SAFC relationship and somehow we got tied in, um, you know, through the SAFC Twitter tied into them. And, you know, if I ever do make it over to Europe that, you know, the, you know, you know, obviously I'm going to try to make it up to there and then 
Awesome. You know, I'm preparing for the store uh, show here. Um, you know, it seems like uh, making you know a trip out to uh, was it uh, Crown Ground? I think is what it's called, or Wham Stadium. Um, Wham, you know, Wham is. Stadium, yeah. Crown, Crown Ground is kind of the uh, the old school title, and now Wham Stadium is the uh, the, the Andy Holt. Uh, uh, name of it because that that's Andy's company. So he, he owns the team and, and sponsors it and, mm-hmm. and all that. So, but but yeah, I mean, you, you definitely yeah, when you get over to England, you need to uh, to get over there. And uh, uh, I, I did actually mention to uh, to Peter Latham, who is the uh, the chairman that uh, the, the chairman of the, the supporters club that, that you were coming on the show tonight, and that that you kind of start following uh, Accrington from Texas. Mm-hmm. So he's uh, he, he's all about anybody over here that, uh, <laughs> that wants to support the team. So uh, so if you're going to gonna make it over there, I will uh, make sure they know that you're coming. Yeah, I'll get in touch with you if that happens. I know, well, right now we're not traveling anywhere. So <laughs> uh, I have a trip scheduled in June for Mexico. We'll, we'll see if that's a, that'll be a go or not. But uh uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, you know, and, and like I said here, when we get a little bit more further down to, uh, um, you know, covering, you know, asking some questions over about, you know, the English side here, I, I know one of my questions for you is going to be how does, you know, Wham Stadium compared to uh, Rising Stadium? Um, looks like they see it about the same, you know, the configuration's a little bit different. Obviously, you have the roof over there, but um, to me, just looking, you know, where they're both, what, around 5,000, I think, uh, you know, Rising Statement's, what, 6,500 now, I, I think, uh, uh, if, if memory serves me correct, um, yeah, Matt. What uh, what what do you uh, what do you kind of think uh, uh, on the rising stadium? It, it's sixty five hundred seated, and then uh, they get in about seven thousand. I I think with uh, the standing, standing. Room and stuff. What 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 would your thoughts on this kind of be, Matt? Uh, from from your perspective of, of what you've seen in comparison to like the Wham. Yeah, where we're Phoenix Rising Casino Arizona Field versus yeah. what you've seen of, of Wham on on TV and pictures and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think as far as size goes, they're obviously pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a couple couple thousand, give or take. Mm-hmm. Um, I think really what the biggest difference is between um, like an English stadium or uh, you know like a USL stadium is just the atmosphere. Um, Mm -hmm. it's just the culture of it where, you know, and and I'm sure you guys see this in San Antonio as well. Um, you know, on a, uh, on any given match night here in the Valley, um, I would say most people in attendance are just kind of your average casual, um, soccer fan kind of checking it out for maybe the first time or the second time, or, you know, it's their kids have played soccer for the last couple of years. And so they want to come and and see what Mm -hmm. it's about. Whereas I think when you're overseas, um, especially at like some of those smaller clubs, um, some of the smaller tiers, you know, last time my wife and I were in England, we got the chance to go see uh, Fulham versus Leeds when when Fulham was still in the championship. So it was two seasons ago. Um, and and ye, it's just the difference in the atmosphere where the singing is done around the ground um, mm, yeah. as opposed to just coming from one stand or, or one section. And, you know, I've been to a number of rising games where um, the people behind me are, are talking through most of it or, <laughs> you know, they're on their phone watching a UFC fight or they're streaming a baseball game. And so it's just I think it's that's the biggest difference is here it's it's very much a sport that's still dominated by the casual um where overseas especially in england it's it's so ingrained in the in the culture of it um you know you go to uh the wham on saturday because that's what you do on saturdays you go watch accrington stanley and you go to the pub and you drink and then you sing and you for 90 minutes you're watching your team and and then when it's all over, you go back to the pub and you hang out and you drink and you're celebrating or you're consoling each other. And um, and here that's not what really any sport is. Um, so I think that's the biggest difference. I was thinking about this and, you know, what England's got, what, 100 plus years of history with it, where the U.S. is, what, 20 20- Realistically, what USL just celebrate what ten years? Yeah, uh, yeah, USL ten years. Five with MLS, and, 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 and you know, I, I know USL's been around for a lot longer than that. You know, whether they want to recognize it or not, but um, to to me, you know, like I said here, 
what we need to work on it, it, you know, as, as fans and, and, you know, as supporters of the, of the game is, um, have more of that American football, you know, religion, you know, whether, you know, whether it's, you know, college football here in Texas or, you know, the SEC or, you know, even the NFL where you've got that allegiance, where you've got that, um, you know, you know, where it's passed down from generation to generation. And I think, I think that's the biggest key that I think, you know, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years from now, you know, you know, like my son's more into soccer than he is American football. Um, and, and we're in Texas and, um, but he's grown up going to soccer games and, and, you know, my daughter as well, you know, uh, for that here, um, you know, I think they've, you know, we'll take them to a couple of high school games a year, but you know, it's mainly, you know, the soccer and that's what, you know, their passion is. And I, I think, you know, for the United States, you know, I think, you know, 20 years, 30 years from now, assuming the finances stabilize and, you know, I think I think we could see a little bit more of that resemblance of what's over in Europe and Germany or, or you know, England and Germany, pardon me, uh, for that here. But yeah, it's, you know, when you look at the history, I, I think that's where that's where English uh, England obviously has has it has it on us where it's not even close. Yeah. And I think you, you bring up just a great point there. It's, it's just, you know, what, what did you grow up with? Um, you know, for most of us, you know, you know, I'm 34. Um, and so, you know, MLS started in, in 95 is, or, or 96 as a, um, a prerequisite to getting the 94 world cup. Mm-hmm. That was part of the stipulation was if the U S was going to have the 94 world cup, then, you know, you guys need to start a, a professional league. Um, but really the U S or the MLS struggled, um, for a long time, you know, you're talking, you had teams in the early two thousands contracting, mm-hmm. um, and it really wasn't until maybe the last 10 years that you've actually seen this, this growth. Um, but I think as we see these younger kids coming up, you know, that have, this is now ingrained in them. You know, I, I grew up in Texas and so I grew up a Dallas Cowboys fan. You know, mm-hmm. my dad was a Dallas Cowboys fan. My grandma was a Dallas Cowboys fan. Like it was just that generational love for the team. And now my kids are, are experiencing something different. You know, we watch, we wake up Saturday mornings and, and watch Chelsea and, you know, on, on some Saturday nights, we're either watching Phoenix rising on television or we're going to the game. And, and so they're growing up with that. And I, I don't know about what you think. I mean, you obviously, you guys cover a lot in San Antonio, but I would go out on a limb and say that youth soccer in Arizona is bigger than youth football. I wouldn't say that here in Texas yet. Right. Uh, yeah. F- for football. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> football is still king. Yeah. You know, there's no way to sugarcoat that. But I do think, I, I do think soccer is gaining. The problem, the the problem is, is, is with, is with, is with soccer is it's so expensive. Right. Um, and that's the problem that, you know, and, and I'm assuming football is as well. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, I, I just think, you know, you know, that's something that, that in order to get the kids, to keep the kids, you know, you've got to have that. And I, I do think one of the great things that that's happening here in the United States and, 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 you know, with UPSL, you know, with the, you know, uh, Gulf Coast Premier League with, you know, um, what's there's the Great Plains League. And, you know, there's all these little, you know, semi-pro leagues that are popping up. You know, yeah, some of them you've got some adults that's got kind of fringe talent that's trying to just to hang on to play the game. But if you really look at who's playing, and, and this goes for both men and women, you know, with the you know WPSL and UWS and uh, the UWS two team, you know, that that's starting out uh, this well, maybe starting out this year, um, is a lot of times it's given an opportunity for you know you know for high schoolers or you know young kids, you know, along those lines to be able to play that. Yeah, you know, when I went to one of the Alamo City games, there was a uh, um, one of the girls that was that she played on the the uh, UPSL team, um, but they also had a uh, a WPSL team. But she got to be able to train, and she was a sophomore in high school. So it's one of those things that you know for you know for the kids and the talent and the growth of the game. I think that's where we're seeing the growth on it now. The problem is, is you know, and, and you know, finances come into play. Is you got teams that show up one day and gone the next day, and and that's mm. the thing that has to kind of stabilize. Um, you know, in the, in the lower, lower leagues, but, you know, that's a, a completely different discussion, you know, with the Federation, you know, being able to kind of help out a little bit as opposed and give some guidance, you know, to those, but. All right. I mean, there was even that, what was it? USL league one team last year. And I'm trying to remember who it was, 
Um, but they, uh, uh it was uh, mean, Lansing. Lansing. Yeah, Lansing. Yeah. Lansing. yeah. Before the, the season, before their season. I mean, these guys are in the playoffs and their owners already like, yeah, we're, we're, we didn't make money this season. We're just folding it up. We're I think they actually made it all the way to the championship game and lost to the championship. No, game. they missed in the semifinals. The semifinals. Yeah. But to me, I think that's more, more on USL. Um, and it's like the same thing that happened in Fresno. Uh, you know, you get owners that that see the opportunity, that see the growth, don't understand that the finance required, especially when you're talking about, um, you know, like in Fresno situation where they needed to de- find a stadium, you know, uh, for that here that, that made it more affordable. Lansing is just nuts because the guy owned the stadium, but it just didn't make enough money for, you know, for him. Right. For, and, and to me that that's more, that's more either lack of a vetting by, you know, USL headquarters. Um, right. and just, you know, trying to fill, Hey, we need team X to, you know, cause we're trying to, you know, beat uh, NISA or, you know, NAS, NASL and, and say, Hey, we're the, you know, we're the third division, you know, but you know, it's, I think you're going to have that, you know, in these early growing years uh, where you get owners that, Hey, see the opportunity but don't fully understand it until, you know, until you get into it. And then, you know, they're like, okay, Hey, yeah, we need to pull the plug. Yeah. Well, I kind of want to move us along here. Um, and, and I kind of want to dive into, uh, just San Antonio. Go ahead. Um, cause you know, what I knew of San Antonio was of course the San Antonio scorpions. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, they, dis- they, they folded or, or dissolved or rebranded. However you really want to say it. And I, I think about 2015, is that correct? Uh, yes, they won the title in 2014. Um, the next year they were put up set, uh, for sale and, uh, you know, SSNE uh, purchased them. Um, and, you know, that's why I've kind of said the worst thing for the Scorpions to do was to win the title in 2014 because it yeah. gave them their their best value to be able to sell. And, and Mr. Hartman was up front. You know, saying, "Hey, it was about Morgan's Wonderland." You know, you know, mm-hmm. you know, for his daughter with special needs. So, you know, we always knew he wasn't in it long, long term. Yeah, but it was still kind of a, a shock. And then, you know, with, with Spurs Sports and Entertainment taking it over and changing it, changing it to you know San Antonio FC, came with mixed emotions. For it, you know, you've got some fans that don't trust uh, the, the Spurs organization because, you know, in San Antonio, it's basically the Spurs and that's the only thing that's here outside of, you know, we've got a now a triple A baseball team and, and then right. um, SAFC and, you know, and, and unfortunately the Spurs did have uh, a WNBA team, which they sold to Vegas and they did have a AHL team, which they've uh, this year announced that they're you know, selling to Vegas as well. Uh, okay. That here, so it'll be interesting to see what it have. I think for SAFC, they do make it does make money just you know for the fact you're getting six, seven thousand fans in, in the door. Um, you know, pretty much every game. You know, they've got a very, very friendly deal with the city and county for Toyota Field. Um, so you know they don't have that huge expense for you know you know where to play and stuff like that. So I think they'll I think they'll still be around long term. But there are some other people here that aren't as confident just for the fact that you know you're looking at the histories, uh, the owners of the Spurs, the Holts, they're going through a divorce. I don't know if it's final or not, but uh, you know Mrs. Holt was the one that that took it over. So right, um, it's you know as far as for how it's how it's ran, it's a good team. Uh, it's a team that's underperformed, um, especially for the money that's that's been put into it and uh, the players. Although they did make a coaching change this year with Alan Marcino, who was the coach that won the uh, NASL title back in 2014. So it's you now it's only been one game, uh, but. You could see, you know, he plays a lot different than what Coach Powell did, uh, you know, previously. Right. You said that uh, this year with the uh, the starting 11, uh, that, that nine of the starting 11 turned over from last season? I think 10 of 11. I think the only one that from from game one of last year to game one of this year, only uh, Matt Cardoni was on there. Wow. So, so a whole roster overhaul complete with uh, a new new coach. Um, but as I'm looking through this list, man, it seems like you guys got some some pretty key pieces there uh, as I'm looking through this roster. Um, yeah. So which of these these new guys are you kind of excited about? You know, I got to throw a little, you know, uh, kind of asterisk to that because Christian Pirano has been out with a meniscus uh, injury. Um, so having this 
time off, uh, unfortunately, may actually be a benefit to SAFC. Right. Um, you know, because he's, uh, he, you know, he's he's our our he Asante type player. player. Last yeah. Year that I, I thought from from the games <laughs> that I saw. So he's one that you could see playing, you know, MLS or possibly even overseas. You know, you know, you know, he's he's got he's got that that ability now how far he could go up that's that's you know the question this year the big uh star so far has been jose gallegos he was scheduled to go to nc state he signed from the uh, uh san antonio ept you know kind of their academy uh you know structure you know as, a, as an he was one of the academy contracts last year i okay. think he came on during the open cup but this year he's you know he's you know he's just you just took that 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 next step. You can kind of see where you know Pirano's kind of paid off. You know, you know, you can see a little bit of Pirano in him, where you know where he's got just that confidence and that and that step. And you know, he guided his uh, you know Central Catholic High School to you know the four state uh, or four state uh, state titles uh, for the Taps, what six A or however that they uh, cover it. So you know, for the young kids, those are the two to kind of watch. The forward up front, Luis Solanag, uh, came down from Chicago Fire. He's got uh, you know a lot of potential. Last year, he I guess he had a hip injury, um, so he didn't get a lot of action. But he's looking like you know, from my understanding, it looks like he's you know, feeling a lot better. Um, the biggest change that I think that we've seen is in the back. It used to be San Antonio was very short in the back, you know, for that here where, you know, prior outside of 2017, when you had Sebastian Igabaga on there, um, who plays uh, with NYCFC. This year, they got Colin Montgomery, uh, who's on loan from Dallas. He's 6'3". They got uh, Axel Schulberg uh, on loan from uh, the crew. Uh, he's 6'7". And then uh, the other one that they have is, uh, where did he go? Uh, Mitchell Tanner. Uh, who's another 6'3 defender. So they're running three center backs in the back. And, you know, with, um, you know, on the, uh, on the, on the outside, they're running, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, Connor Maloney and uh, I'm drawing a blank on it. That's all right, man. Both of those have uh, MLS talent or was MLS talent last year. So. Yeah. So you're talking a complete thin change there on the back line. Cause you, well, I believe last year you guys played in a back four and now this year, it sounds like you're playing in a, in a back three. Yeah, well, it's three center backs and the the full backs go up. So right, I think I think if we're playing somebody like Phoenix, it's going to be more five in the back. You know, we're, we're they're going to pack it in and more counter. Um, right. I know Marcina wants to press a lot more, but I don't know if you can press Phoenix. That's you know, <laughs> you know, no offense, but you know, you don't want to leave yourself too you know too exposed to you know you know the attacking power that Phoenix has. So. That's what's so disappointing is we, we got to go out and kind of see that one uh, six one uh, blowout and there was like okay that, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, um, you know, kind of looking through this roster, I think Axel Schoberg is a huge pickup for you guys. Played a lot of years at, at Colorado. The rapid, um, that's yeah. where you kind of first kind of hit my radar. And anytime you got a center back that's six seven, if he, you know, and what I've seen of Axel is he can he can jump. You know, mm -hmm. he's not a six, seven guy that has like a, a, a 10 inch vertical or a three inch vertical or, you know, he can get up there. And so you have to be a forward that's very creative with your runs and, and smart and how you're going to attack the goal with a guy like back guy like that back there. So I think that's so a huge pickup for you guys. My my concern in you know, like said, I like the height in the back because, you know, back in 2017, San Antonio had height with uh, Seba and McCarthy. You know, now they ran a four back at, at that time, but you know that kind of set up for Matt and and at the time Diego Restrepo, you know, at the time who's a little bit, sm you know, who's a, who's a, on the smaller side uh, for a goalkeeper, but. To me, like I said here, my only concern is if you get a team with speed, uh, you know, right. just to see how that how how you know how they're going to be able to cover along those lines. Now with you know with with them having MLS talent and playing at the USL level, I think that kind of equals out a little bit. But then you've got you know teams you know. And I'm talking about the great teams like like Phoenix here that have MLS and, and talent up front. You know, you know, how will those two kind of match up? You know, you know, going forward, we were supposed to see that last weekend. Unfortunately, uh, we, you know, it was canceled out, but uh, we just got to wait <laughs> if it comes. Yeah, like I said here, I. You know, it, it, it'll be interesting. And if it does come back, you know, how is it going to be abbreviated or right. what's going to happen? Yeah. Now, I got a question for you. What is your favorite all-time match between Phoenix and San Antonio? 
Um, I think as far as for an entertainment value, you would have a hard time beating the first game last year. Um, the three, three, you know, thriller where, you know, unfortunately Jason Johnson got it, you know, got the, the tying goal at, at, at the depth there. Yeah, that was um, a great game. That game just went back and forth. <laughs> well, that even had, uh, if I remember correctly, that even had a Billy Forbes goal, right? Yes. Uh, had a so, Billy Forbes goal. I think it was his only goal for SAFC, uh, you know, for the year. He might have had one other. But, yeah, you know, he had the cutback, you know, which everybody knew was what was coming. But, yeah, it had that. And I can tell you the worst game was is – I actually went to Phoenix in 2018 uh, where Forbes scored against SAFC as well as Devin Vega. And, oh, man. you know, the 4-0 you know, beat down and, uh, you know, it was Diego, uh, Diego Restrepo's actually the last game uh, starting uh, for SS- SAFC because he had a, you know, went online and had a, 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 a Twitter, a Twitter event, we'll just say, uh, that he probably <laughs> regrets uh, having. But uh, yeah, so that, that was not a fun drive home uh, you know, uh, after getting destroyed. Um, I think that was a, you know, that's a long just drive here. too. What's about 12 hours? Uh, I think it was 14. Yeah. And yeah, Diego I- Diego Restrepo's in in Austin now, right? Yeah, he's in Austin he's with Austin. Billy Forbes and Chris yeah. Tierpak. Yeah, right on. Um, so speaking of Austin Bold, uh, you guys play in the Copa Tejas, right? Mm-hmm. Which was new last year, Correct. first time twenty nineteen. Um, because I don't know if our listeners know this, but Texas has a lot of professional soccer teams. So we got four in the USL. Then you have uh, currently right now two in. Uh, the MLS with Austin FC coming next season, I believe, 2021. Mm-hmm, correct. And then you have the uh, Houston Dash, which is the uh, WSL team or the NWSL team. Mm-hmm. And is there another NWSL team in, in Texas? There is not now. Okay, so just there, is, there, there is a race now. There is also North Texas, uh, the um, uh, MLS2 team in right. League One as well. Okay, so, I mean, a lot of professional, but uh, for San Antonio FC, Copa Tejas, supporters, uh, trophy, competition, mm-hmm. um, is are those exciting games? I know that, um, you know, here we have the Four Corners Cup mm-hmm. with uh, New Mexico and uh, Utah and um, Colorado, and, and those were just kind of, I would say an elevated atmosphere last season, Phil, if, if you would agree with me, is it kind of the yeah. same atmosphere there in, in Texas? It is, but I think it's one that could even be better. And the reason yeah. why I say that is, and, and, I'm, and, and I know kind of a little bit of the backstory, but not enough to really say anything is um, like, you know, the, the stampede with RGV, you know, the San Antonio supporters groups uh, you had uh, eight notch with uh, El Paso, None of them were able to bring in, you know, like when you went to each other's stadium. Now, I guess in El Paso, uh, you could have. Um, I guess they were open to it. But right now, each Copa Teas side, uh, you know, at least previously, and, you know, supposedly it's going to change this year. But, you know, we'll see. They kind of put limits on what the away supporters could do. Um, so basically they could come in, but they kind of limit the flags. They kind of limited, you know, the, the drums and, and stuff like that. Supposedly, oh, supposedly. You know, because I know, you know, at the Christmas party, we talked to Tim Holt about it, saying, hey, this is something that if the stampede does come up, because they did come up, but not a lot of them, just because, you know, hey, you're standing there, you're not allowed to, you know, bring anything in. I know Eighth Notch brought some drums and were denied, uh, you know, on bringing it in. And I know they brought a TIFO saying, hey, this drum got in, uh, you know, for here, which was awesome. <laughs> the, you know, the, the problem with the El Paso's match, both of them were on Wednesdays and it's an eight hour drive. So, you know, it's, you know, I made the trek, but, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to schedule off from work, but, you know, not a lot of people are able to. So hopefully with the scheduling, uh, it was looking a little bit more promising uh, where, where, you know, the supporters were, were going to be able to, you know, travel, you know, with, with it being Saturdays or I think the Austin SAFC match was on a Sunday, but it was at, you know, three. So it was something that was still reasonable to where, you know, you could go. <laughs> now, uh, one, one thing I was kind of thinking after what, what Matt brought up earlier about how many teams that there are in Texas is I, I was wondering, do you think that there's more teams in Texas or in Lancashire? 
Uh, that's a good question. So we're going to have to figure that out. I mean, Texas is a lot bigger. I mean, what Texas is what, like two and a half times the size of that, the whole country of England. But I, I mean, still for a, a U.S. state, uh, that is a lot of teams. And now, if you think about the travel distance, though, I mean, from a, a place where, where if you're in, uh, you know, like, say dallas for instance and then traveling to uh you know, el paso <laughs> that's a long uh long trip what's that about 700 miles maybe even um i don't know if it's quite that long well, it might be that long probably well, about eight hours the long one is el paso to houston uh because basically you're going from one side of the state to almost the other side oh, it's, which it's is 750 city. miles take you about 11 hours to drive without traffic oh okay i didn't realize that houston was actually further from el paso than uh than dallas was because yeah, dallas you have where you can go down 20 by 20 it's, it's, so it's about 635 635 miles about nine hours i know san antonio is about seven and a half hours eight hours you know to to go Wow. So, I mean, that that's just, that that's something I'm bringing up right now for our listeners in England. So, basically, we're talking road trips of seven, eight hundred miles within one state, uh, where, where if you're in, in Accrington, the furthest trip that they take in is Portsmouth. And Accrington uh, to Portsmouth is 271 miles. So, so basically, what you're looking at is, uh, is you, you were talking about that long trip from Houston to El Paso is three times the distance of, of Accrington to Portsmouth. It just kind of puts it to uh, perspective how, how different things are here than over in England. Well, you look for you guys, what you got San Diego, which is what San Diego is probably your closest rival, right? Actually, I've, I've done the math on this, and our closest is Vegas. And that was something I was going to say is Vegas is roughly the same distance from us that, that Accrington and Portsmouth. So, yeah, our, our closest trip is, is the same as Accrington's longest trip. So, but that's that's just that's the issue with the United States, and yeah, <laughs> it just it's it's if you're going to have a national league, um, you know, and, and and that's why you know what three years, four years, I guess it was about three years ago there was the rumor that USL was going to go to the three conferences where you're going to have the East, the Central, and there then the, and then the, or, and then like the West, that, yeah, think. but. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the best idea just because of the, the travel cost and you would have some of these teams keeping in business. And while you were uh, while you were talking there, I did look those two up. So uh, the Phoenix to Vegas listed at 300 miles, even Phoenix to San Diego is 354. So so yeah, those are our, our two closest trips are, are still longer than, than Accrington to Portsmouth. But now, like you said, there's getting to be enough teams where, say, you had three conferences of, what, 13 teams each. I think there's, there, is there 39 teams now? No, 37. Oh, okay, because we lost. We lost, we lost, you we lost Fresno, yeah. And oh. I think, unfortunately, I do think, you know, you mentioned with Austin FC coming in and one of the things that, you know, I'm sure it probably hasn't made national news is you know what the bold play at, at Circuit of Americas and well, racetrack and, and are yeah, the racetrack owned by the racetrack owner also correct you know Mr Epstein who, who's a, who's a great guy and, and you know you know he's always been a pleasure to me but you know like I said you know if you get him and the Austin M, M, uh, Austin MLS guys it's it's a different story but uh, I've heard about that <laughs> so but. The, to me, I'm wondering if you if how long Austin Bold will will be around now. Whether they relocate that that that'll be a different discussion. But with you know the the Circuit of the Americas having you know the F1 race and and other races that that may or may not be coming back because I know uh, F1's going to Miami. I also believe. So from my understanding is that the racetrack really is what supports the bold. And if it's not getting that income, you know, you've got to wonder the, the long term of having, you know, an MLS team there, whether, you know, whether they drop down or, you know, what happens, what happens with that relationship. I, I, I've always hoped that they would kind of maybe work together. Not that I want, you know, more two teams in there, but I think right, that's the only right. way that Austin Bold sticks around long term. Now, you know, like I said, I don't have anything concrete, 
but just, you know, you know, looking at the economics of it, you know, I know what they report and what they're actually getting are, pro- are two different numbers. It's not right. like San Antonio and Phoenix where, you know, if they put, hey, we're getting six, seven, eight thousand people, you know, that's a pretty valid number. They're reporting probably three thousand and, you know, you know, for their home opener against New Mexico. You know, I was, uh, you know, I was told there was probably less than 2000 there. Oh, wow. Um, you know, actually there. So that's that's the thing that you that, um, you know, you, you still hate to see. And, it, you know, it's part of the growing pains, you know, just, you know, as we hate to say it, it, when when MLS comes to town and the same thing will happen in Phoenix, you know, MLS comes to Phoenix. You know, if it's the same group, you know, you may see the rising move up, you know, whether, you know, maybe like a Sacramento type situation. Mm-hmm. Or it could be like a St. Louis situation where, you know, there's concerns whether St. Louis will be around next year, you know, the year before, uh, you know, St. You know, MLS to St. Louis, you know, goes to MLS as well. So there's some still some volatility, you know, at the USL championship, you know, with the teams. And then, of course, you know, you've got the League One teams that, you know, that that they're trying to fill in the, the gaps with, the, you know, especially with Tucson out there. They're the only what the only team out west at all? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's that's a horrible, horrible situation for Tucson. I mean, their their travel distance. If you add that up, it's just uh, unbelievable. And and especially at the third tier. I mean, if if they didn't have the money of the Phoenix Rising, because they're they're essentially the Phoenix mm-hmm. Rising's two team. And, and this would actually be a great time for me to to kind of ask you because uh, this is something we talk about a lot, obviously, on the show. What is your personal opinion on two teams overall? Should they be there? Do we need them? Should they all go down to League One? What What's your two cents on this? So, I believe USL is going to be doing pro rel within USL. So, I think you know how can you say Real Monarchs has to just because they're a two team has to go down to League One? You know, when they won the league last year, you know, the, you know, they beat probably the best team, not once, but twice at the end of the season, you know, both, I think both in Phoenix, right? Yeah. Both in Phoenix uh, for that here with real monarchs. How do you, if they're doing it right, where they're bringing in not only the youth that they have, but they're also bringing in quality veterans compared to, you know, like Seattle and, and no offense to Portland, but, you know, you know, with, with, from my understanding with the Portland team, it was a bunch of kids out there, you know, that played you guys week one. To me, that's not healthy for, you know, for the championship. So I think if, if USL did a, you know, instead of doing the three conferences, did a, and, and this is how I, this, you know, this is how I would hope that they would do it. Say, hey, in 2022, we're going to implement pro rel, you know, the, at the end of 2022 or at the end of 2021. So this year and next year, if you're in the bottom five, you're going to go down to league one to help get them up to the 20 team and, and you know, to kind of help balance out the teams. So you could have a mixture of probably majority two teams that go down. But if you got a two team that's being quality like Real Monarchs, they stay up or, you know, New York Red Bulls too, they stay up. But if you have a team, you know, no offense to our friends in, in Colorado, but if you have a, a team like Colorado Springs that struggles, you know, th- you know, they may drop down to League One, you know, which budget wise may be a little bit better for them, you know, for that here. But to me, that's how I would hope that they would do it. I don't think you can set a blank rule saying two teams have to go down. Now, the problem you come into is the atmosphere. Um, and, and But you've got teams like Portland that's changing, you know, to what is it, uh, you know, uh, Hops Stadium, or, you know, you know, I know it's the baseball team, but they're moving out of uh, the MLS Stadium. So, uh, you know, Hillsdale, Hillsdale is where they're moving to. Uh, they're moving to Hillsdale. You've already got, you know, the, the Sounders, too, that moved to Tacoma, which is a better environment. It's still not perfect, but it's still a better environment. You know, and then you got teams, you know, no offense to our fans in Orange County, you know, they're not selling out their stadium. So, you know, in, in you know, it's an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere is the biggest complaint against the two teams, right? Yeah, man, I, I would agree with everything you're saying. I think you get pro rel and, and kind of that changes this whole discussion about two teams. Um, but it definitely is. I think it's that environment. You know, I always thought it was weird, like, you know, if you're an LA Galaxy fan, why would you necessarily care about LA Galaxy 2? You don't. Um, you're right. 
Um, so yeah, I, I, I think you're spot on with this, this analysis. And I, I agree, man, I think we're going to see pro well within USL in the near future. It was something, uh, when they first announced the championship league one and league two, that, uh, was kind of hit it, hinted at. Um, yeah. so I think it will be good for American soccer, uh, when it happens. Um, and I think it'll be good for the USL when it happens. Yeah, Jake Edwards has got on record as saying that pro rel is an ultimate goal of the league. But and if you think about it, for what he's what he's developing, it makes sense because unfortunately, you have a federation that doesn't look at the pyramid, you know, at all. They look at MLS and in table scraps with the rest of the stuff. But if you could have a uh, defined nine level pyramid the way it is in England, yeah, it's it's not. And but if you look at what USL is doing, and USL is not perfect, let's just go on record. There's a lot of things that they do that's not right. You know, for instance, Chattanooga. They should have never went to Chattanooga. You know, they were one of the teams that did it right. You know, I hope for hell that they stay away from Detroit because you know Detroit City does it right. So there's certain avenues that. USL needs to, you know, yeah, you're, you're trying to muscle in and, and and do what, you know, you know, do what's right. But, you know, you've also got to, you know, learn what, you know, you don't want to step on the toes on the teams that are doing it right. And I think that's where USL has got to kind of learn. But I do think that, you know, you know, if you get a team like Ford, Madison, you get a team like Omaha, um, even a team like North Texas, you know, like last year that had tons of talent you know, you know, on their roster to see how they would do in a, you know, you know, in, in, in the championship would be awesome to see. Yeah. Now I think uh, the more USL can get away from trying to be like MLS, the better. But I think it'd be a testing round for MLS as well. Oh yeah. Especially where they're talking about the super leagues. And, and I think for the big leagues, you know, like Liga MX and, and there, if, if, you know, I know there was a report that came out that, you know, said, Hey, you know, a, a possible 50 team, you know, MLS, you know, Liga MX, you know, merger, you know, possibly, you know, around the time of the, the U S world or the North America world cup, I guess I shouldn't say U S world cup cause it's Mexico and Canada as well you know, around that time, it, it only makes sense that you're going to, and, and I know in, over in Europe, they've, they've had discussion with the super leagues as well. Just the money at that level, it's too much for FIFA to ignore and stuff like that. So I think, you know, you're going to see where USL kind of comes in. I think in the next couple of years, now I could be completely wrong with it, but I think if they come in with the next couple of years and, and show that even for the lower leads, it's a, it's a successful you know, you get a little bit more excitement when it comes to the end of, end of year with teams going up, going down. You can still have the playoffs, so that doesn't necessarily have to change, you know, for that here. And, it, you know, I, I think it's a win-win and, you know, yeah. you know for that. Yeah, I, yeah man. I agree completely. And uh, now we're uh, we're actually we're, we're running uh, right up to a, an hour here. So uh, uh, before we uh, we wrap up here, uh, let's uh, let's let you have uh, what is one thing that you want to spend the last five minutes on that that you wanted to talk about that, that we haven't so far Harry so I wanted to talk about obviously you guys it's a Crittington Stanley right or Accrington Stanley Accrington Stanley Accrington Stanley Accrington. so to me my question I was kind of just kind of going through and looking at, at your history and it looks like you know you know for the new team and and, and I know it's a, a you know a new reestablished team here they've only gone down once looking at it here <clears throat> but how big was it when they went you know uh you know from you know in 0506 you know for them to go from the national league I believe is what it was called at that time uh-huh. to you know league 2 for them to be able to stay up cuz you know just kind of reading a little bit about the history I guess there was a time where they were in the drop zone and, and then of course they went on a late run to to you know push above it uh for that here but how big was that for you know for the history of, you know of Accrington Stanley yeah so uh, just to kind of give a, a little uh, history so basically uh, the the history of Accrington uh, actually goes all the way back to the the 1888 mm-hmm. original football league. There was a, a team called Accrington FC, which was actually different than Accrington Stanley, but they were members of the original 1888 football league. 1891 is when the original Accrington Stanley formed. 
so-called that because their stadium, uh, which was known as Peel Park, was on Stanley Street. So the Peel Park Accrington Stanley ran from 1891 until 1962. In 1962, the original club went out of business. Uh, they kind of uh, had a, an eight-year period where there, there was a team that they, they kind of sp- still fielded, but it wasn't an official team. Finally in 1970 was when the modern version of the team played their first official non-league game in the ninth tier. Uh, In 1981 was when they got their first modern promotion. Uh, And then what happened is, is like you were talking about, they've only had one relegation, uh, which was in 1998. 1998 they were relegated the following year 1998 excuse me 1999 2000 was the first time that john coleman was hired uh they got promoted that year they actually got promoted two years in a row then uh and then they finally like you said in 2005 2006 was where they were promoted from the the national league uh which actually it's still the the national league is what it's called uh, it's the the Vanarama National mm-hmm. League is what it's called right now. But but yeah, so when they received that promotion to become a football league team again and uh, reclaim what, what they feel is, you know, their city had a team in the original 1888 Football League, and that's kind of their claim to fame. I mean, if you Google Accrington, the first thing that comes up is Accrington Stanley. If you go, if you're somebody from Accrington and you go to another country and you say, I'm from Accrington, the first thing people is going to say is, oh, Accrington Stanley. It's what the town is known for. I mean, there, there's a few other things like they uh, they actually were known for making the finest bricks of the world at one point. Actually, the bricks that form the foundation of the Empire State Building are from Accrington, but still more than anything else, Accrington Stanley is Accrington. So just getting that promotion and reclaiming their spot in the football league would probably, I would say if you ask most people, they're probably the the biggest moment in the town's history. Then my only other question, and I guess this would be more of a question for you, Phil, is how do you watch the games? You know, is it something that you just follow, you know, whether it's through like a, you know, radio, you know, radio, because obviously, you know. Oh, no, no. There's a, an iFollow service. You, oh, you just, a service. Yeah, you, you just go, if you go to accrentonstanley.co.uk, there's what's called iFollow. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I do what's called the monthly subscription. It's $19 a month. Uh, that's true. Streams all of the games uh, live right through my uh, my computer or cell phone app. I uh, see even on your phone and our uh, our buddy Ben Wild, who's been on the show, he does the commentary, and it's something that it gets better and better. Like uh, it started, I think. Two years ago, I had two years ago up. This is the first year Stanley actually had their own package. Okay. Uh, But uh, so I used to actually have to buy game by game from the other teams. (laughs) But now Stanley (laughs) has their their own. But yeah, like two years ago, there was no announcers, no instant replay, single camera. Now it's just, it's, it's like a regular broadcast. You have two commentators. You have a uh, replay, multiple cameras, you have stats at halftime. Uh, and, and what we actually uh, do with the, the North American Supporters Club, and, and hopefully whenever you make it to Phoenix to visit next will be, uh, what what we're going to do is, is whenever you're going to come to Phoenix next, uh-huh. we'll plan to make sure that the weekends you're here will be when we do our Accrington Stanley Supporters Club meetup oh, nice. so you can come and watch the game at the pub with us we uh, we stream it right there and take pictures and they even uh, you'll put us up on the, the team website watching the game and, and all kinds of stuff and, and uh, another thing we want to do is 
is we'll uh, we're gonna send you a uh, an Accrington Stanley official supporters club membership uh, oh, nice. and a uh, official uh, North American supporters club. In. Uh, I'm going to get those sent over to you here. And, and I also, I wanted to thank you for being one of the very, very first people to order one of our shirts. That, that was just so awesome. We, we can't thank you enough for ordering our shirt. No, oh, no, I got it on right now. <laughs> so I didn't know if we were doing nice. video or not. So I was like, that's awesome. Well, if we are, I got to gotta have it on. So, but no, it's, it, to me, that's how you support it. You know, like I said here, obviously at this time, you know, it's not like, you know, we're going to games right now. So, you know, if it's a way to be able to support and, you know, it was what, 20 bucks or something like that. So n- nothing too crazy to wear. Um, yeah, it's a good shirt. So unfortunately the, the shirt printing is on hold right now because of the virus. But, but one thing we do want to mention the, uh, the shirts, we actually are selling those the cheapest that we can. We're not even making any money <laughs> off of them. We just want you to, to put our logo on your chest and, and, uh, and we'll, uh, you sent me a picture of yourself wearing the shirt. I'm going to use that as the thumbnail for the podcast here. <laughs> nice. You're going to lose you viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have your good looks there, Phil. So. Oh, that's not <laughs> true at all. Matt, Matt's, the, uh, Matt, Matt's here, the one that's here for his looks. He's, uh, <laughs> he's our, 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 our model here. He's Mr. Yeah. Q. Yeah, that's yeah, what I tell I Scott. I tell Scott, he's like, you're the one that's got the looks, you know, because me and Rafa, you know, you know, we've, we're carrying a couple extra pounds. And, you know, of course, Danielle's, you know, obviously she's a woman, so she always looks, you know, uh, appropriate, uh, we'll, we'll just say. But, uh, yeah, Scott, uh, Scott's the uh, the good looking one out of our bunch. So, <laughs> Mel, what else did you have before we, we wrap up here with Harry? Uh, well, I, I think really I, we just want to ask you, you know, where can we um, follow all things? Uh, you know, where's your podcast? What's the name? You know, where can people go and listen to it? Um, and how can we best support you guys? Yeah, so I think uh, as far as we're on Facebook and we do Twitter at, uh, was it SATX Soccer uh, for it here? Um, at SATX soccer. SATX soccer, yeah. So at SATX soccer, I think we're going to be doing shows on Wednesdays this year. This year, uh, this year, uh, for that here is what we've been doing. You know, we, we're we've um, upgraded the the technical side to where it can be on Twitter and Facebook uh, at the awesome. same time. Uh, we did have a YouTube channel. We were doing out in there, but we found that uh, we're getting more uh, interaction, especially doing the the high schools, and especially at this time. You know, with, with uh, high school action being uh, here in here in in Texas, it was there was two weeks left in the season, uh, but when it when it got shut down, so you know you know feel real bad for the seniors that they may not be able to oh, uh, finish the year in, in the playoffs and. Yeah, you know, we, we had some really good teams, you know, in the area that on the on the boys and the girls side that would have been interesting to see how they would have done in the playoffs. So, you know, you kind of feel bad for them where, you know, where, you know, their season was took away. So I know we've been trying to help, you know, put out top 10 lists of, you know, scores, diff, you know, uh, keepers, clean sheets, stuff like that. And awesome. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of helped uh, do that here. But uh, you, typically it's what we're going to do. Uh, for that here so you know if you can watch listen i know we're on google play uh apple and soundcloud um i think the three is first for podcasts uh that we're on so um, but but no any 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 support writing too don't you uh on the website yeah i don't do a lot just you know like i said here it's not my uh forte but yeah if you go to uh sasoccer.org uh you know we have uh some on there but you know and I, I shared uh, I shared your uh, your your writing articles link on both our Facebook and Twitter, and I also shared your most recent episode on our Facebook. So, page. We appreciate that. So yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And and I'm gonna. I I didn't even know that that you had the uh, the Facebook one until uh, you told me about it today. So I because I I've always been on your your Twitter or on the, the YouTube before, but I didn't even know you had. The Facebook one, so I have liked that, and I will make sure that whenever you guys put a new episode, that I, I put it on uh, our Facebook page because we're up to about eighteen hundred followers on oh, there. Nice. So we'll, uh, get, get those eyes on uh, on your shows because those are uh, are awesome. Because like I said, you guys just do every every level, not just the uh, the San Antonio FC. 
Which, which I think is important. And, and, you know, I know on our last episode, we kind of talked about and, you know, on the episode with uh, the minivan, uh, you know, from Chicago, we talked about, you know, the role of the podcasters and stuff like that, especially covering uh, the lower roots, you know, lower the lower roots, uh, you know, of soccer right now is really is really valuable because most you know newspapers are cutting staff. I know uh, San Antonio's uh, newspaper cut the main guy, Terrence, that we had that you know, was doing an excellent job. And, you know, for that here. So it's, you know, it's, you know, the, the media business is, is rough. But, you know, with, you know, I know your guys' show, you know, with, with all the shows that, you know, in Phoenix and, and, you know, we've got two, three here in San Antonio as well that 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 try to, you know, pick up, you pick up the uh, missing actions. And, and, you know, the biggest things that I've seen is that, you know, especially for the kids and, and the lower leagues, you know, you know, UPSL. And I know, you know, you guys in Phoenix there, you know, with, you know, with the rising players, you know, there, there's that connection that you're able to develop that you wouldn't normally get outside of it you know right outside right. of it and, and to me that's an important you know it's an important aspect like I said here at this level you know there's nothing better than, than you know being able to interact with the players get to know them a little bit and you know be able to share your family with theirs and 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 like I said here uh, you know as long as it's on a professional you know level don't get me wrong um, but you know, like I said here, it's, it's, you know, it's, that's why you follow the game is, 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 you know, the action on the field and, you know, you know, the players that uh, do community work, you know, you know, in, in the area, which I know rising and SAFC both do, you know, a lot of community service, you know, in, inside of that, which is, you know, how the game grows and, you know, you have smart guys like Sam and Preston, you know, the, the, you know, the media guys. And, you know, I know Sam's moved on to uh, the Coyotes, but. Yeah, he, um, he used to be in San Antonio before yes. Phoenix, for those who don't know. Yeah, so he, he's missed here. But, uh, you know, like I said, I was kind of surprised he went, um, although, you know, I kind of knew he wasn't going to go to the MLS if you guys did. I always thought that he would be more of the guy that took Tucson to the next level for that, you know, you know when you guys, you know when you guys move up to uh, MLS if you guys do, of course. But he's doing good things with NHL and and uh, yeah. with, uh, the Phoenix Coyotes and uh, I'm just glad he's still in town and I'm a, I'm a fan and I've got a partial season ticket for the the Coyotes too. So I, I would say, you know, if he's gonna go anywhere, I'd, I'd have it be there. <laughs> Dude, he's a genius though. I, I you know, I'm not sure there's a smarter guy as far as for marketing and, and stuff than, than than Mr. Sam Dorr. So Oh, not at all. Not at all. He He's the man he is. Harry, thank you so, so much for uh, for coming on the show tonight. And we really, really enjoyed uh, chatting with you. And with the uh, when the season gets going again, I, I kind of talked to you on Twitter that we need to uh, get together where we maybe get a fan from, you know, four or five different Western Conference teams and into one big uh, episode where we kind of preview all of our teams teams before things get fired back up again uh, what do you think about that i'll be down for it all right let's let's do it you, you down for that matt yeah man that sounds good harry thanks for coming on man it was, uh, it was good talking with you and hopefully we get to uh meet up one day in person yeah uh we will it's on whether it be this year or next year but yeah it's yeah we, we, you know yeah first dollar beer is on us with uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> uh, have a great night harry we'll talk with you soon Appreciate it, guys. Bye. See ya.